The two men followed behind, blindly allowing the stranger to guide them. They had set out earlier in the day to trek and survey the area, but a few hours prior, their Sherpa, Tenzing, had disappeared. It didn't matter anyway. It was easier and more discreet for them to do what they had actually come here for without him watching them. They called out to the tall stranger with the lantern, but no reply was forthcoming. He just continued walking forward to what they hoped was the pathway back to the village. The figure in front of them came to a halt just up ahead. They had reached the trailhead. As the two men reached the tall figure, it slowly turned, raising the lantern in front of its face. The intensity of the light obscured its features. The only thing they could make out were glowing, red eyes. It put forth a hand, palm up, as if asking for something. Its fingers were long and curled, with sharp, elongated fingernails. The first man looked back at the other, questioning what was all this about. Then he remembered the folk stories the villagers had warned him about. It had to be appeased. He reached into his pocket, but as he did, he heard his friend yell and run forward, brandishing a machete. Welcome back. Today I bring you SCP-5252, The Lantern Bearer. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. What the? I am Moralia, a healer. And by the looks of you, you need it. This video is sponsored by Gemstone Legends. But not only that, we have a fantastic contest in store for new users. Obtain the highest score and you'll win your choice of an iPhone 13 Pro or a Samsung Galaxy 21 Plus. Hey, have a look at this. It mixes together match 3 style games and some RPG elements for a unique experience you won't soon forget. When you download it, be sure to come and find me, Professor Lucius. How good is it really though, Morelia? Just take a look. 4.5 stars on Android and almost 5 stars on iOS. Need I say more? If you wouldn't mind, yes. Lazy? Fine. You can download the game from the links in the description below. Or use Mr. Fancy Pants Lucius's QR code up there. Remember, once you finish the tutorial, you'll automatically get a $50 bonus, alongside automatically being entered in the contest. You'll get a chance to win the main prize, an iPhone 13 Pro or Samsung Galaxy 21 Plus, or win smaller prizes such as Google Play or Apple Store gift cards. Not to mention potions and gems to help you rank up faster. Oh, and also Moralia here. What? What? It's a great way to relax when you have a moment free. I particularly enjoy playing a few rounds during those boring 05 Council meetings. Now get in there and download it now. I'll be waiting. Could you explain that part about them getting me again? See you in Gemstone Legends. That's a hell of a story. What do you think it is? A Yeti? It's a Yeti, right? Come on. Yeti, yeah? Do I really need to dignify that answer? Called it. Yeti time. No, it's not a Yeti. Did you hear me say anything about white fur? This thing was carrying a lantern and more humanoid than some massive ape creature. So what? Drunk guy? What's that got to do with the foundation? For crying out loud, glowing red eyes, long creepy fingers. Ah, right, right. Anyway, Nepal, here we come. Base camp is operational, sir. Preliminary interviews have been conducted. All leads point to the Jadana. It's sort of like the village's spiritual leader. Shall I bring him in? Yes, but do it gently. I suspect we're going to need his help again. Leave it to me. Gently is my middle name. You? Stay here! Let them handle that! I need you to check over the perimeter! You underestimate me. Such a waste of my many, many talents. Chen walked the perimeter with another field agent, expecting the work that had been completed prior to their arrival. These perimeter fences, too shallow. Leave them for the night, but tomorrow I want them sunk in deeper. The searchlight suddenly lit up as the perimeter sirens rung out. Let's go! There had been an attack at containment unit number three, nearby the local village. What happened here? Sir, uh, two construction personnel and three security personnel. Dead. Five injured. The Jadana came to us with books, babbling incoherently. 
I tried to calm him down, but he wouldn't have it. Anyway, I had him detained off-site and we resumed felling trees. It came out of nowhere. Before I knew what happened, they were dead. Can I offer you some tea? No, I'm, I'm fine. Okay, straight to business then. Yes, I would prefer that. You are the Jadana. I am, but you can call me Sang. Okay, Sang, can you explain what's going on here? I tried to warn them, but they wouldn't listen to me. All of you, you need to all leave now before it's too late. Too late? Too late for what? You've upset the spirit of the forest. It will come back for you. What have we done to upset your spirit? You come here year after year, you litter, you disrespect the land, damage our trees. Do you think you could do this with impunity? You mean the tourists? We calm the spirit and provide offerings to appease it. But every year it gets worse. If you don't leave now, I fear for all of us. I see. And the two men before me? They were not tourists. They said they were. But they were not. Tenzing knew that they were surveyors for a logging company. He left them on the trail to fend for themselves. Sang stood up. Now I must leave and try to calm the spirit. I warn you now. Leave. Before it's too late. Chen stood up to block the man's path. It's okay to let him go. The alarms blared, awaking Chen and Kloss from their sleep. An agent came running in. Sir! Fire near the village! From what they could see, most of the village had burnt down. Bodies of both foundation staff, contractors, and the local villagers were found strewn across the site. We should have listened to his warning. What happened here? SCP-5252 engaged personnel. We're not sure how the fire broke out, but one of the men might have dropped the lantern nearby one of the wooden houses during the chaos. Did the SCP come into the village? Negative. The men were preparing to extend a section of the wall when it was spotted. They engaged. Where's the Jadana? Where's Saint? We haven't been able to locate him. Get a Sherpa and make sure he's a good tracker. They followed the man through the tight passes, heading higher up the mountain. It was dark and bitterly cold, the only light coming from their flashlights and the Sherpa's torch up ahead. He had picked up a trail leaving the village. There were two sets of footprints, one larger set slightly older than the first. As they rounded a precarious bend in the mountain, they saw the Sherpa up ahead, stopped with his lantern held high. They slowly approached and surveyed the surrounding areas. They couldn't see anything. Why have we stopped? The man pointed at the ground without looking away. The footprints led to the edge of the mountain and simply stopped. I don't understand. They didn't just commit suicide here, and they surely didn't fly away. What's going on? The Sherpa turned his gaze away from the mountain he had been watching in the distance and slowly lowered his lantern. As Kloss's eyes adjusted, he saw a faint light on the mountain across from them. He raised his binoculars to have a better look. It was a lantern. The light went out, and all that was left were those glowing red eyes. Two pairs of them now. Due to the operative zone of SCP-5252 remaining immobile, Area 5252 encompasses SCP-5252, its known range of travel, and a one-kilometer buffer zone. No alterations or additions to land, flora, or fauna are permitted. All Foundation members are to undergo training protocol BSC-5252 to minimize damage to the area before being assigned to Area 5252. SCP-5252 is an approximately 2 meter tall humanoid entity of indeterminate race and gender which carries an oil lantern. Reported details regarding its appearance are sparse and unclear. SCP-5252 travels at will by unknown means throughout a 26.3 square kilometer section of land located in the central region of Nepal within the Himalayan mountains. The area includes a remote mountain pass, numerous hiking trails and a local village. A pattern of injuries, thefts, and disappearances have been attributed to SCP-5252, most often seen on adjacent peaks or trails moving along at a walking pace. 
Sightings of this entity date back in local records to 1435, but oral tradition puts the potential first emergence of SCP-5252 within the 12th century. Instances of this entity coming into closer range of observers are primarily during inclement weather. Reports indicate that lone or paired climbers who become lost often mistake it for a Sherpa or rescuer and follow the entity back to the trailhead. SCP-5252 has only been observed as a dark outline of a tall, humanoid figure. SCP-5252 stays several meters ahead of the observer and does not respond to verbal commands or inquiries, regardless of the language spoken. Once the observed figure reaches the trailhead, it will stop and wait for the hikers to catch up to it. Survivors report that the brightness of the lantern makes any details of the figure indistinguishable, but a dark hand is held out, open palm, to the lone or nearest human. If the individual fails to present SCP-5252 with an item, it will take an object by force or inflict non-lethal injury. Sightings and encounters with SCP-5252 have been found to be increasing in conjunction with rising numbers of tourists in the area. If preserving nature for our own benefit and survival isn't reason enough for you, how about not having the lantern bearer knocking on your door? Don't forget to check out Gemstone Legends for a chance to win an iPhone or Samsung Galaxy. Links in the description. As always, have a care and remember to subscribe, like, and share, if you would. Until next time, farewell.